Let's start by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakagadash, that's Yahweh, being the true name of the Heavenly Father. In Hebrew, Yahweh Shai, being the true name of our Lord and Savior, and the Rakagadash, being the Holy Spirit, double honor to the elders and apostles, the great millstone for teaching us his truth, honor to the brothers pushing his truth, risking their life and freedom to do so. So we're back with another lesson through the power of the Holy Spirit. And this lesson here, something I haven't talked about in a while, is those fake J's, the Jews that's in our land claiming to be the people of the Lord. Because during these last days, there's a group of people that's saying they're the biblical Israelites, but they call themselves Israelis. And they're claiming to be the descendants of the Messiah himself, whose real name is Yahweh Shai, which y'all call Jesus, which they are not. And when we go to the book of Matthew, verse 1 through 17, it's the genealogy of Yahweh Shai, the Messiah, pretty much like a family tree, starting at Abraham, branching out, going all the way down to Yahweh Shai, the Messiah. Now, a couple names worth mentioning. Start off with Abraham, of course, Isaac, Jacob, then Judah. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. One of the sons of Jacob, one of the sons of Israel would be Judah. And Judah is who the so-called American Negroes come from. Then all the sons of Judah, all the way down to Obed, David, Solomon, some other names worth mentioning in the middle of the genealogy. Then the sons of Solomon, all the way down to Joseph and Yahweh Shai, the Messiah. And this is a bloodline of the Jews. Because after Jacob, it starts with Judah. That's why when we go to Hebrews 7 and 14, it reads, For the Zebedee, that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. So yeah, our Lord sprang out of Judah. That's why going back, it's Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, then Judah. Then from Judah, it go down to David, Solomon, back to Joseph, this, then Yahweh Shai. So all Negroes come from Judah. Yahweh Shai came from Judah. That make him a Negro. Then when we see David right here, being in the middle of this genealogy, those who came before David and those who came after David should look like him if they are all Jews because this is a bloodline. And we see he has dark hair, woolly hair, and dark skin. Moses, not from Judah, but from the Southern Kingdom. So they're similar to the tribe of Judah. Also woolly hair and dark skin. So one more time, for it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. So if our Lord sprang out of Judah, after King David, he should have features similar to King David. None of those people in our land, those Jewish, those Israeli people, none of them fit the description of the ancient depictions of the ancient Hebrew, ancient Hebrew Israelites. Neither do they fit the, the depiction of the Messiah in the book of Revelation. In the book of Revelation, that root word of revelation is revealed because during this last generation, there will be a great revealing to the world. Like somebody having a baby to have a gender reveal party, where well, Yahweh Shai is having his own reveal party. He's revealing the truth of all things. Everything that's been lied about, covered up, hidden, concealed from us, is being brought to the surface because during this last generation, generation, there will be the great awakening amongst the Lord's chosen people that a great deal of knowledge will be revealed to us. And then us holding this knowledge will spread it to the four corners of the world to show them the truth that was shown to us. And this truth will begin to elevate us and break down this wicked kingdom of America. But in the book of Revelation, the first thing the Lord is revealing is himself because he knew during the last days, his true image would be corrupted, that he would be painted to be a white man. And 
as well as the other biblical figures, the angels, the heavenly father, everybody's been painted to be white people. So if Yahweh Shai is a Jew coming after King David, who is a black man, Yahweh Shai should be dark. Yahweh Shai being the ultimate Jew, he's the Jew of all Jews. So he's the image of the face of Israel. So Israel as a whole should look like Yahweh Shai, you know, with small differences. So let's get Yahweh Shai real quick. And I turn to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with the garment down to the foot. So Yahweh Shai has a garment clothed down to the foot. So does King David right here. And girt about the paps with the golden girdle. So he's wearing a golden belt. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Yahweh Shai, as we turn, is going to have white woolly hair. David has dark, but still is woolly hair. There's only one nation of people who has woolly hair. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burnt in the furnace. So Yahweh Shai's feet and the rest of his skin is the color of burnt brass. Brass that's burnt in the furnace. Look at David over here, a very dark, a dark skinned man, like burnt brass. And when you take brass and burn it, it turns black. When you take anything and burn it, it turns black. If I take a piece of white bread and burn it, it's going to turn black. If I take a piece of paper and burn it, it's going to turn black. If I take a banana peel and burn it, it's going to turn black. If I take a t-shirt and burn it, it's going to turn black. So there's no way around the scripture. There's no way around the skin of the Messiah, the son of God being dark from something that burned in the furnace. People like to dispute this and say, well, if you take anything and burn it, it could be black. Well, that's the point. He can't be no other color then. And in the book of Revelation, uh, like we said, it's a big revealing. So the first thing Yahweh Shai wanted to get straight, wanted to get in, wanted to get in order, would be himself. So Yahweh Shai is correcting a few things. In the first one, he's correcting his image. He's letting you know what he's going to look like. And when we come to Revelation chapter two, verse nine, it reads, "I know thy works." and tribulation and poverty. So he's talking to John. John represents the nation of Israel. So the Lord knows our works, that we always been a righteous people. He knows our tribulation, our suffering, our affliction, our oppression. He knows that the struggle is real and our poverty. He know that we poor. He know that we have no power. He know that we at the bottom here in the earth. And then it also reads, but thou art rich, rich in spirit, rich in faith. We are spiritual people because we are the holy people. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. So Yahweh Shai is saying he know the horrible lies. He know the abominations of the people who says they are Jews, who claiming to be the Jews, the biblical Israelites, he says, but they are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. So there's only one people who's claiming to be the Jews. And it's not talking about us because we saying we're the Jews during this last generation, but nobody believes us. But this is talking about the people who are accepted by the world to be the Jews. And that would be the people that's in the land right now. They are widely accepted in the world to be the Jews. If you go to China, you go to Japan, ask them who are the Jews, they're going to point out the same people. Those black suits and kufi hats. So that's who the Lord is talking about when it says, I know the blasphemy of them that said they are Jews and are not but are the synagogue of Satan because they were set up by Satan himself because they didn't get into 
Jerusalem until 1948. They put themselves there. The Lord said in the last days, he will set his people in their own land. The people once set themselves there, the Lord will set them there. And we got a couple clues to show that those are not the Lord's chosen people. And we're going to get that in Isaiah. We're going to start at 2 and 2. And it should come to pass in the last days, during the last generation, that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. It shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow into it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, and to the house of the God of Jacob, and we will, he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. Out of Zion shall go forth the law. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. Zion is Jerusalem. And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So the law, the word of the Lord, means the Bible in its entirety will come out of Zion, come out of Jerusalem. Ain't nothing but madness, wickedness, and confusion coming out of Jerusalem right now from those fake J people, from the people who claim it to be the Lord's chosen peoples, those Jewish, those Israelis, they the synagogue of Satan. And yeah, we about to show that. So we're going to read something real quick. So the biggest gay pride parade is held in Israel, Jerusalem today. Let's read this description. The Tel Aviv Pride. Tel Aviv Pride is a week-long series of events in Tel Aviv, which take place on the second week of June as part of the International Observance of, Great, of Gay Pride Month. So Israel, Jerusalem, the Lord's chosen land right now, have the biggest gay pride observance in the world. It's an international observance. People from all over the world go there to celebrate gay pride. The key event taking place on the Friday is the Pride Parade itself, which attracts over 250,000 attendees. So it's going to be over a quarter of a million people from all over the world to take part in this gay pride parade. Then we see what they got going on here. A bunch of flaming hot, sweet, I don't know what. And we don't even know what this is over here to the left. But this is what's coming out of Israel and Jerusalem. A bunch of confusion. Now let's put the scriptures back up. Out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. When would this happen? This will happen and it shall come to pass in the last days. Well, in the last days, we can see the law is not coming out of Zion. The word is not coming from Jerusalem. So this lets you know these are probably not the people. And that's what we got, a bunch of confusion. Babylon in Hebrew is Babal. Babal means confusion. So when we call America, Great Babylon, we're calling America the land of great confusion. Because America is the most confused place in the world. And Israel is an extension of America. So you got a bunch of people acting out their wicked lust and wicked imaginations, doing anything they want to be. They might be a woman tomorrow, a man today, or in between during the night hours, a bunch of confusion. The Lord is going to nuke these people to death. And this was coming out of, out of Jerusalem and out of Zion. Just a bunch of wickedness. So let's go back to the scriptures. Out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And this is not Jerusalem. This is the fake. This is not Zion. These are fakes. And he shall judge 
among the nations and shall rebuke many people. All these people will be getting put to death that this was actual Jerusalem and actual Israel. But they out there just being wild animals. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. So when the Lord would establish Jerusalem, where he would establish his people and put them in their own land, it reads nation shall not lift up sword against nation. Now this is not talking about an actual sword. This is talking about a tank, a jet fighter, a gun, a rocket launcher. The nations would not go to war with one another anymore. That's why afterward it reads, neither shall they learn war anymore. And I got something else we're going to look at. We're going to look at these headlines to these videos. One month ago, three months into 2022, Israel on edge once again. Three weeks ago, Israel fighter jets attacked Gaza for a second time in a week. And we didn't even hear about that. Israel featured twice on list of potential 2022 conflicts. So yeah, um, Israel is going at it with Hamas, Gaza, Iran. Israel and Iran been bucking up one at another, but that goes against the scriptures. Because what did it say? Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they war anymore. So these are two of the biggest clues showing that those people in our land are not the Lord's chosen people because the law is not coming out of Zion. The word of Yahweh is not coming out of Jerusalem. They're doing everything contrary to the law. They're going against the word of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And they still going to war. Not only that, they're going to go to war again. But not only is they going to go to war, they're going to lose. That whole land of Israel is going to be nuked. It's going to be turned completely into dust. Because the Lord is going to destroy them fakes out of our land so he can set us back there. And it's going to be known they're not the Lord's chosen people when they get nuked. Because the question is going to be, why didn't the Lord protect his people? Because they ain't his people. So Revelation 1, if we go back, the first order of business that the Lord is doing, he's revealing himself, he's setting the record straight, he's letting you know who he is. Revelation 2, he's saying he know those who say they are Jews, but are not. He letting you know that those pictures you've seen of me is fake, and those people who claim in to be my people now, they are fake. He's saying, you know, the people who's claiming to be the Jewish people is the same people who painted him white. They are all one and the same. They're the synagogue of Satan. Then the third order of business in Revelation 3. Behold, I will make them. Let me go back. Behold. I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. So the Lord is talking to John. So he's letting them know those who say they are Jews and are not, the Lord is going to make them come and worship at our feet. Now, if we look at these people here, these can't be the Lord's chosen people. A bunch of Goofy looking soft Edomites look nothing like the ancient Hebrews painted on the cave walls. Don't even dress the same. So, Revelation 1, the Lord revealed himself. Revelation 2, he said, I'm going to expose the fake Jews that they are not the real people. And then in Revelation 3, he said, I'm going to show you who the real Jews are now by making the fake Jews go worship the feet of the true chosen people, which would be us. So again, I would make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. I will make them to come and worship before thy feet.
and to know that I have love thee. So the Lord is going to make these fakes come and rush up at our feet. That's going to show the whole world who the true Jews are by it being the Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And they're going to note that these people are not the real Jews once they see Yahweh Shai return. And then to make it even better, the Lord is going to make these fakes come and rush up at our feet. Now, we're going to show you something about these Jews real quick. How we know they're the synagogue of Satan. We should see a real strong resemblance here. These Jews are the same people that was hanging us hundreds of years ago. And you could tell by the kufi hats and the black suits, they were in the same thing, a bunch of wicked Edomites. That's who these people are. They stole our land, they stole our freedom, they stole our book, they stole our identity, they stole our hope, they stole everything. So these are the same people. A bunch of wicked Edomites in the crowd celebrating over a Negro being hung. This is the synagogue of Satan then, this is the synagogue of Satan now. Nothing's changed. It's like if somebody commit a crime, wearing a certain outfit, and then so many years later, he get caught because he wearing the same outfit still. So we caught you, Esau. You not white, you not a Jew, you an Edomite. And it shows. So this is it for the lesson here. These are fake Jews. Those people who say they're Jewish and Israeli are not the Lord's chosen people. They're the synagogue of Satan. So until next time, Shalom.